Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa Lesniak. I am a lot. I just realized that I have not been introducing myself in my other videos. So, so sorry about that. But for those of you who are new around here, my name is Vanessa Lesniak. I am a watercolor artist. You can find me all over the interwebs. <laughs> I will, you know, put down here where you can find me over on Instagram and Patreon and all that good stuff. So today we are going to be watercoloring a Monstera leaf. And um, I'm going to take you step by step through the process and we are only going to be using two colors, sap green and cascade green. Now these two colors are gorgeous because not only do you get the greens, but you get yellows and blues coming through. So you're going to see that this Monstera is going to paint itself. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I said, we're going to be using two colors for this tutorial, um, Daniel Smith's Cascade Green and Sennelier's Sap Green. Um, Sap Green, you can find them in a multitude of different um, brands. So feel free to grab any of the any of the Sap Greens that you have or a similar color, color. I already have Cascade Green in my palette, so I'm going to be working out of my palette but I do not have sap green in my palette, so I'm just gonna grab a clean um, ceramic dish and add a bit of that cascade green to the dish. Now, both of these colors are beautiful colors that separate into other colors. So with the sap green, you're gonna see a lot of yellow show through, and with the cascade green, you're going to see browns and blues show through. And because of that, we are going to use these in very wet washes so that we can pull those colors out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how, um, or just really, really quickly, how to draw a monstera leaf and you'll see that it is very very easy so we're going to start with a rounded heart shape um, and the very top of the heart where it dips that's where the leaf is going to be attached to the stem so once you draw your heart shape we're going to bring that stem all the way down through the leaf and you're going to have two equal-ish sides. And now we are going to draw in the breaks of the Monstera leaf. And we'll also draw in a couple of like little holes and stuff just to make it a bit more authentic. So you can make as many as you want. You can make them thicker, you can make them thinner. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really, really simple. We're going to keep it as simple as possible. Once you have drawn your leaf, then you are just going to grab an eraser and then erase in between um, the little breaks that you did. And there is the basis for, or the very rough sketch of your Monstera leaf. Okay, so now that we know how to do a very rough sketch of the Monstera leaf, we are going to do the same exact thing on our paper, except we're going to make it much larger. So I really want this leaf to kind of be um, taken, to kind of take up the entire paper and also be uh, falling off of the paper. So you're not gonna see all of the edges of the leaf. So you can make it smaller if you like. I just, I wanted this to take up as much space as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that I did on my little drawing onto my bigger sheet of paper. I'm initially drawing the stem coming out of the leaf, but it is not staying that way. I'm going to end up erasing that because I only want to showcase the leaf. One tip that I can give you is try to make this look as organic as possible. So try not to have too many extremely straight lines. You'll see that I do begin to kind of like curve some of the lines and give it, um, try to make it look natural and uh, not completely straight. 
Um, so try to make it as organic as possible, especially when you're drawing the little holes. Don't make them perfectly round. Make a couple longer, make a couple shorter, give it a little bit of a jagged edge and um, continue doing this for all of the leaf. I'm also very fond of the monsteras that are a little thinner than most. So that's why I made mine my like you know the leaf parts that stick out that's why i made those a little bit thinner but feel free to make them as thick as you would like when you are done thoroughly erase the parts you know where the breaks are and what I also like to do is lighten up my sketch. Um, when I'm using a dark color, I don't usually do this, but since I'm not using too dark of a color here, I'm going to lighten it up. So I have a kneaded eraser, so I'm just going to roll it in my palm a bit to give it shape, and I am just gonna rub it across or roll it across the paper to pick up some of the pencil marks and lighten up the drawing just a bit. Once it is light enough for me to still be able to see it, but not for it to show through the uh, the watercolor, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take one side of the Monstera at a time. So I'm going to be working on the top side, and I am going to thoroughly wet the areas within the leaf. Be sure, be sure that um, when you're doing this, that you're working around the holes in the on the leaf if you added any. So thoroughly wet one entire side. Um, I am using 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is the Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press White. Um, if you do not have 100% cotton watercolor paper, you may have to wet your paper several times and wet it as you go. As it stands, this leaf is so big that I am going to have to um, continuously wet my paper just to keep it wet. Once that top half is nice and wet, I am going to water down some of my sap green. So what this is going to be our first layer. We're going to work in several layers with this piece. And you don't want to come off the bat. Like you don't want to come off really strong right off the bat. So the the water that you lay down is going to help with this. It's going to help really distribute that paint and make it as light as possible. But adding water to the paint that you already have on your palette or on your you know, ceramic dish will also help make it light. So this first layer, again, it's going to be a nice light layer. So um, continuously wet it as you go as well. If your paper is beginning to dry, you can take it one leaf at a time and continuously wet it. Also laying down a very thin layer of this sap green. And as this sap green dries, you are going to see the yellow pulling out of it. You actually can see a little bit of yellow pulling out of it right now, but you'll really see it once it starts to dry. So we are going to continue painting this entire side. Um, by adding in this sap green. Once you're done with the side that is wet, now we're going to take it on to the other side and start wetting it. So we're going to do the same exact thing that we did to the top side, and I'm just going to take some water and add it to the bottom. Now the reason that I didn't do this all at once, so the reason that I didn't wet the entire piece, is because it's so big that if I did this, then it's guaranteed to to, to be dry by the time I get to the second half. So if your Monstera is a little bit smaller than this, then you don't have to take it one side at a time. You can wet both sides and kind of work quickly laying down that first layer. However, mine is pretty big. I didn't want to take the chance of it drying on me. So I am um, working 
one side at a time. So just as with this first side, we are first going to water, add water to the inside of the leaf, and then we are going to put down a very light wash of the sap green. So first layer is now done. And now we're going to add our second layer. And our second layer is going to be a very light layer of our cascade green. So as you can see here on the paper, you can see the greens and the yellows showing through. And we don't wanna lose that. So what we're going to do is take some of our cascade green and really water it down just as we did with the um, sap green and you're going to see that it's just going to layer beautifully over this now your paper should still be wet if it's not wet anymore if it has dried then we really what you really want to do is um, add a very thin layer of water so that the paint flows on the paper just as it did when we were adding in that um, sap green we want the paint to flow nicely and we want it thin enough where we can still see some of that yellow showing through from the first layer. If parts of your leaf have already begun to dry, then you should do as we did earlier when we were putting down the sap green, which is um, wet the paper as you go. So wet the leaf as you go. As you see here, um, I just noticed that this part is already drying. So um, I am going to water it down again. So just add, add more water and then add the green on top of that. So you're going to do this for every section of your leaves. And another really easy trick to get it to blend without losing the layer underneath is to add the cascade green mostly on the edges of the leaf and let it flow in. You can aid that flowing in by wetting your brush and then just running some water along the edges to get it to blend in. And again, remember to keep the layers light so that the one underneath will show through. Once you are done with this second layer, allow your piece to completely dry before moving on to the next part. Mm -hmm. 
After your piece has completely dry, grab your pencil because it's time to add in the veins. So we are going to start with the center vein that goes straight down through the middle of the monstera leaf. And we want this to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the veins. So we're going to draw one side at a time. So with your pencil, just lightly trace in a vein that goes straight down the middle. You don't want to start directly in the middle of like that crease. You want to start a little bit to the side because you want the middle vein to be centered in. And we're going to draw two lines, one on either side and we are going to make sure that they get progressively thinner as you um, work your way towards the bottom of the leaf. Once you have your middle vein done, now it's time to add the ones that go off to the outer parts of the leaf. So um, start in the middle and you're going to do the same thing as you did with the vein that goes straight down uh, the middle of the leaf. So they're gonna be a little bit thicker as it is closer to the middle vein and they're going to get progressively thinner as they get towards the outer part of the leaf. So go ahead and trace in um, all of the veins for all of the parts of the leaf. Once you are done adding in your veins, it's time to take it to our third layer. So for this layer, I'm going to be using a highly concentrated um, dose, if you will, <laughs> of the Cascade Green. And you should, at this point, switch to a smaller brush. I am switching to a size two brush you can also use a liner brush you just want a really small tip so that you can get into um, the very edges of your liner so load your brush up with that cascade green we want it as dark as possible close to the edges and you are going to take it section by section as you see me doing here um, trace in a little bit of the corners and the edges of your pencil markings and then take some clear water and pull that color out from uh, from the edges of your pencil marking and by pulling that color out it adds a little bit of color to the leaf but also what it does is create a shadow and that shadow is going to give you the illusion of the vein. You're going to have the lighter green underneath showing through and that is going to to be what forms the vein of your picture so continue to do this make sure that you're outlining on the outside of your pencil marks and take it slowly um, i really advise taking it slowly because if you try to rush this too much um, you will you know most likely lose your vein uh, for for your leaf so try to take it as slow as possible as slow as you can bear and remember to water to add water to the um, middle of the leaf and pull some of that color out. So you're gonna go in with clean water and you're going to take it section by section, pulling out that color as you go. So you'll have a higher concentration next to the edges of your vein and then it's going to seamlessly blend out into the rest of your leaf. So it's going to add a little bit of color to your leaf which is fine, but it's not going to take away all of the layers of color underneath. So continue to do this for the entire leaf. This part might take a bit, so I'm really gonna uh, speed this up for you. Also, don't forget to go around the, um, the broken bits of the leaf, the little circles and rectangles that you added to the leaf. So go around all of them adding a high concentration close to the edges and then drawing out that paint by adding water along the bottom of it.
Once you are done with this layer, let it completely dry before moving on to the next. Now it is time to add in our shadows. So we're still going to be using that same Cascade Green, but I'm going to be mixing in a little of the Sap Green to that. And you'll see uh, during the rest of the shading area where we're adding the shadows, I am going to be alternating between adding a lot more Cascade Green or a lot more Sap Green, just so that we can get a nice mix of the yellows and the greens in, uh, in with the, the leaf. Okay, so you want nicely saturated areas of shadow. And most of the shadows on this leaf are going to lay at the very bottom of the leaf and the very tips of the leaf, except for the two leaves at the very end of the paper. So the, the ones that you can see me painting here, right? The ones that are con connected to the stem. Those are giving the illusion that they're kind of turned downwards. So we're going to add some shadow to those areas. And in order to do that, we are going to do the exact same thing that we did when we were filling in our uh, veins. So when we're making our veins, we are going to line the edges of the leaf with a highly saturated uh, concentration of color. And then we are going to draw that color in by adding water to it. If you want to make some of your leaves thicker at this point, you can do it. Um, because we are going to be using such a high concentration of this color that it's going to um, it's going to kind of cover up a lot of that white. So as you see here, I wanted this top leaf to be just a little bit thicker. It was a little too thin for my liking, so I'm not following the line of the leaf. I'm going a little bit into the white of the paper. And since I'm using so much color, it's going to help disguise that area there. So again, I am adding a lot, a lot of color to the very bottom edge of the leaf. And I'm going to do this to every section of the leaf um, in order to give it a nice deep green shadow. And that shadow is going to give the leaf the illusion of being, um, of kind of being turned down. If, if you get my drift. <laughs> so it's going to give your leaf a lot of dimension to it. So feel free to add as much of, of this uh, green, this green mixture to the bottom of your leaves. Uh, there is no such thing right now as too much. It can only get so dark. So you'll see some areas, I'll make them a lot darker than others. And when you are adding the shadow, make sure that you're following the curve of that leaf. So make sure that the, the shadow goes up a little towards the center where the vein is and um, just leave little bits of the color underneath showing through so that it'll give it a nice highlight. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to do for every single one of these leaves. Once you are done adding in your shadows, let the piece completely dry before moving on to the next step. Now, this next step is completely optional, but I really like the effect that it adds. So I'm going to start with my bigger brush, which is the size eight, and I am going to add a ton of water and a ton of cascade green, and I am just going to tap some splatter over the top of the leaf. Now I am also going to do the same thing with the Cascade Green, making sure that there's a lot of water and that there's um, a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just going to splatter it everywhere. And with that, 
we are done. So there you have it. We painted this beautiful Monstera. You can add or don't add. <laughs> I should say you don't have to add any of the splatter. I just have a thing with extra white space on my paper. I have no idea why, but I always add splatter when there's too much white space. It's me. It's me. So if you don't want to add the splatter, you don't have to. So I hope that you enjoyed this project and um, I will see you all next week for another tutorial. Bye.